So you're welcome to our online lecture series for final level two of the Chartered Institute of Taxation. Today we are looking at strategic tax planning and we are going to consider the free zones. The free zone is one area where you will need, um, you, you, you're going to use it when you are called upon in exams to advise somebody who, for example, may have money and he's looking for um, opportunities in, in, in the tax environment to be able to invest the money. It's, it's um, it, The free zone offers a very juicy tax incentive for people, but there are conditions. And so today we are going to look at the Free Zones Act to first discuss why the Free Zones, the Free Zone concept was developed in 2000 and, uh, in 1995 and how the tax law makes provision for it. So prior to 1995, the concept of economic development was, was on, the, on the drawing board. So GIPC, which is the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, had in place some policies that attracted foreign direct investment. Then in 1995, the whole process was um, enacted into law so that there will be a major reform towards economic development. And we're going to do that through what we called a free zones um, authority or act that will oversee the way foreign direct investment should should come into the uh, the country and how they should operate so the free zones act was passed by parliament in 1995 and they established the free zone board with responsibilities to ensure that the whole idea of economic development is achieved um it was more focus on how government was going to participate or government is going to collaborate with the private sector so the ministry of trade and industry and private sector were were the main um, focus or stakeholders to oversee or ensure that this economic development through foreign direct investment is achieved so the free zones was 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 established but literally let's let's consider what we we describe as free zones and um, for those of you who are familiar with togo and how goods come through ghana sometimes we call some materials are uh, togo jeans they appear to be very cheap though in some cases they are substandard in quality so a free zone is literally a place where a country's customs procedures and when we talk about customs procedures we're talking about duties taxes and other um, regulatory requirements are not um, more or less the regulatory requirements within that area are suspended we, we say it's a free area it's a free zone so government does not necessarily exercise those strict requirements or those strict tax laws and procedures it doesn't operate there it, it is seen as an area which is outside the customs territory of a country though it's it's within the same country within within the same territorial uh, enclave of the republic we normally say that that area is is unique and so we should treat it differently from the other places that we 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 have within the country so it, it is within the country all right but it is outside the territories of mostly customs and and other uh, procedures that will apply in a country and because it is it, it it has a special purpose we try to give them special tax incentives and privileges and so you can call it in different languages or in different ways. Look at Togo, for example. Togo operates the free port. So when you bring goods 
into the uh, Togo borders and as long as you are not going to sell the goods in Togo Togo ordinarily will not charge custom duties and other things that are supposed to be charged when you import goods the goods are in Togo all right but it's not left the customs area it's within the the, the port and so when people go and buy those goods from that area uh, they won't pay duties and that is why the goods are very cheap over there and because they don't pay duties if you are a Ghanaian and you go to Togo and you go and import those things from that place you only pay duties when you are getting to to the border uh, flower border so when you bring it into Ghana the transportation is cool you, the transport is very uh, the transportation is very cheap or it's not expensive as you bringing it from Dubai or from China so those goods are more cheaper and what the Togo people or the Togo, Togo authorities make is that look as long as they are companies are selling goods at the within the port they are able to get at least corporate tax because they will make money it is the duty that you are not pay you, you don't pay so the free zone area or the free zone concepts in in different countries can sometimes be described as a processing zone or a free zone we call it even duty free zone or a free port sometimes even if it's a, a river we can even call it that way so it's a nice concept and because of the tax incentive that is given to companies operating within that area you get a lot of people operating and they are able to to do to do a business and make money so that we can also get some some other economic benefit so we are going to look at it how the concept has finally been enacted into law and like we said um, there are minimum bureaucracy and regulatory requirements there are tax incentives there are a lot of benefits and even when they are exporting their procedures are very relaxed and it's good and so most most of the time you see questions that are relevant as and because of the tax incentives you you're supposed to know them and so we need to read and understand the free zones act and then the major area where i will want us to focus for exams purpose will be the tax exemptions and then the imports and exports within the free zones what how does the tax incentives benefit people who want to invest in those areas so um we we're going to look at the act act 504 section by section and then um we will we'll conclude on on that um if you study the past question in most cases the examiner wants to see how familiar you are with the with the law with the free zones act so expect some questions from this area okay so we are going to look at the entire act fortunately it's around um around 35 well, we can say yeah we won't consider everything 35 sections and um there are some sections which are very important for us so we'll consider those ones so let's look at part one establishment of the free zones board and like i mentioned since 1995 the law was enacted and we needed a board or we needed an authority that will oversee every operations within the free zones board so look at the free zones board the composition of the board the functions of the board the tenure of the office of members of the board members and allowances meetings of the board committees of the board here what i need you to consider most will be the establishment and their composition and then their functions things like the committee and all those things may not necessarily be um examinable area though you do you just you, you have to know it because you will never know how um, your practice may take you so know the functions especially what are the functions of the free zones board so that if your client intends to apply for um a license you will know how to to go by it then part two will consider the establishment of the free zones developers of the free zones and then the uh, how how do you 
how do we describe a place as free zones? Um, those days we used to have a specified place described as free zone. Nowadays, you don't need an enclave. You can even describe a single building as a free zone. So we'll look at the declaration of the free zones and the constitutional requirements, the qualification of a person who wants to develop an area. So the, the, because there are tax incentives and you wouldn't want people to abuse it, somebody must be in charge. The person must develop the area so that enterprises can go in there. So we'll look at the rights and responsibility of a free zone developer and then how a subcontractor, a, a, a subcontract can be given to somebody by a free zone developer then we look at free zone enterprises so there are diff there's the difference between the free zone developer the person who is developing the area for it to for it to be suitable for operation and then there's also the free zone enterprise an enterprise is some company that has decided i want to operate within this area so look at the free zone enterprises and then um the qualifications the rights and their responsibilities now because there is a board you need a license so we'll look at the licensing requirements okay and how a grant of license will be and the conditions attached to the license how your license can be revoked and the register that must be kept by the free zone authority now from section 21 to um 27 and then you continue with 28 these are the examinable areas so 27 i can say 27 to 20 27 to 35 if you can't read everything at all these are the areas so we'll look at the import and export what are the tax incentives the requirement to sell at least 70 percent of your your produce outside ghana the whole idea is that we need um for foreign currency in other words we need a um, we need you to produce so that you can sell outside and the more you produce and sell outside the more foreign currency we get just like the cocoa we want to be an export pro export country export a, com a country that exports a lot and thereby having a lot of industry so it's it's more like um, um foreign attracting foreign direct investment so there are some requirements regarding import and exports and and we'll look at those ones tax incentives section 28 the tax concession we have to pay a lot of attention because that's where your advice is going to be so a question will be given to you and then they'll tell you that so so and so wants to enter into business but he doesn't know how to deal with it so the tax concession and the benefits to the people who decide to go into the free zones are all stated under part under and, and this part then we'll, con we'll conclude with some administrative and miscellaneous provisions and the fact that there's a secretariat of the board and other things great so let's go into the first part and just like the the long title of the act says it's a free zones act an act to enable the establishment of the free zones in ghana for the promotion of economic development so the key concept is that we want to pro promote economic development to provide for the regulations for activities in the free zones and any other purpose and this thing came into force in 1995 it's an act of parliament so let's look at the establishment of the free zone board so section one establishes the free zone board and it says there is established by this act a board to be known as the free zones board referred to in this act as the board so we have a free zones board and the office is, is around cantonment so anything you need regarding the free zones you need to con contact the board section two talks about the composition of the board they say the board shall consist of a chairperson who shall be the minister for trade and industry and eight other persons four of whom shall be appointed from the private sector so it's, it's more like a balance <coughs> a balanced thing so eight people the Minister of Trade is an automatic chairperson, and then four from the private sector, four from, from I believe, the, 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 the public sector. The members of the board shall be appointed by the President in a consultation with the Council of State and shall include at least two women. So we ensure some gender balance here. So let's know the composition of the board and then their functions. 
and i believe that we can go online and then check the composition of the board so the free zones board it's, they have a website so you can go there and then check the ghana free zone authority okay great so this is a free zone authority you can look at the, the so these are the board the current board members and uh, keepers and a country profile good so like the ad said the the chairperson is the trade minister and so the trade minister is currently on our lunch and thing so he's the then we have other members who maybe uh, there must be a balance four from here four from here okay so michael okay junior is a board member kinsley juju forcing is a board member dr susan allo is a board member Oseku for can come is a board member honorable andrew siama is a board member the 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 act said at least two must be women fortunately i think we have more more than two here cynthia morrison a, a, a board member we have rosemary archer board member alex from pompton crime and then christine irabna lati great so um that's the board um their functions okay so i think um, these are key persons okay all right so they they have even uh, put their mission here to help transform ghana into a gateway to africa by creating an attractive and conducive business environment through the provision of competitive free zones and special economic zones incentives and operations of an efficient one-stop shop for the promotion and enhancement of domestic and foreign investment their vision is to achieve more exports beyond the horizon the horizon into africa and the rest of the world so it's an export driven then he says the ghana free zone board was established on the first october by an act of parliament free zones acts um, it is to enable the establishment of the free zones blah 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 then it talks about the concept the, the free the ghana free zone program is designed to promote processing and manufacturing of goods through the establishment of export processing zones and encourage the development of commercial and service activities at sea and port areas in essence the whole of ghana is accessible to potential investors who have the opportunity to use the free zones as a focal point to produce goods and service for foreign markets talk about the board the board then talks about the board and then the functions of the board Granting license to applicants, assisting up applicants for license under Act 504. So, more or less, they they try to outline some few things there. So, and then they, here they come say the priority sectors. The following priority sectors have been identified by the authority based on Ghana's comparative advantage. These sectors are, however, not exclusive. Investors can invest in any other sectors, sector of their choice: agro processing, floriculture information communication technology pro chemical textile power manufacturing seafood processing jewelry hand, handicraft production ceramic tiles manufacturing metal fabrication pharmaceuticals i think beauty products light industry assembling plants then they list some support services that they can provide for for people so it's 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 a good it's a good um concept so we've seen the board the board and then the let's look at the functions i think the functions uh we saw it on the website so the section three says the functions of the board are to grant licenses to applicants under this act assess application ap applicants for license under this act by providing services for obtaining other relevant license permits and facilities examine and recommend for approval agreements and treaties relating to the development and activities of a free zone monitor the activities performance and development of free zones developers and enterprises ensure compliance by free zone developers and enterprises of this act and any other laws relevant to the free zone activities register and keep records and data on the programs of developers operators and enterprises in free zones perform such other functions as are incidental to the foregoing so these are the functions of the board 
so they grant a license they assist you if you need some other permits from any regulatory authority they examine any agreement as far as the free zone is concerned they can they need to monitor later we'll come and see the requirements of a free zone enterprise if you decide to go into that area there are some things that you need to you need to uh, comply they they ensure the compliance of all these things kindly know this one because it's an exam we can ask you in exams good so let's look at the tenor of office of members of the board and um well you this may not be an exam area because uh, nobody is going to ask you how um the members then the tenor of office but let's look at some interesting points it's a member of the board other than the chairman shall hold office for a term of four years and is eligible for reappointment so they are tenor of office in four years except the chairperson the chairperson we have identified that he's always the trade minister he doesn't have four-year term and the reason could be that a trade minister can be changed anytime there could be reshuffling at any time so you don't give him a fixed term so if the president decides to um reshuffle him today then a new person comes and then a new person comes to take over as a chair person a member of the board other than the chair person may at any time resign his office in writing address to the president through the chair person or may be removed from office by the president in consultation with the council of state for stated reasons so again the chair person is um ring fence the chairperson is there because of his position as a trade minister. So there's nothing like he resigning from the board chairman. He resigns as a trade minister. And if he resigns as a trade minister, then it means that a new trade minister must come on board. Members of the board shall be paid such allowances as the minister responsible for finance shall determine. So the, <clears throat> the allowances are determined by the, the, the minister of finance. They will look at section 5, which is the meetings of the board. And then committees of the board let's quickly look at this one and then the board shall meet for the dispatch of business at such times and places as the chairman as the chairperson may determine but shall meet at least once every month the chairperson shall preside at all meetings of the board and in his absence the members present shall elect one of <coughs> sorry, one of their members to preside the quorum for a meeting of the members shall be five of the mem of the members Question at a meeting of the board shall be determined by a majority of members present and voting. And where there is equality of votes, the person presiding shall have a casting vote. The board may co-opt any person to attend any of its meetings except that a person co-opted does not have a right to vote on any matter before the board for decision. The validity of the proceedings of the board shall not be affected by vacancy among its members or by a, de a defect in the appointment or qualification of a member and this is very relevant because if a license has been granted and there is a, a, a problem with somebody's qualification to the membership that should not affect the private person who has obtained license to produce a member of the board who has an interest in a contract proposed to be entered into on behalf of the board shall disclose in writing to the board the nature of his interest and shall be disqualified from participating in any deliberations of the board in respect of the contract so this is to ensure conflict of interest you don't give decision you don't approve something that you 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 preside over a member of the board who infringes section seven subsection seven of this section is liable to be removed from the membership of the board except as otherwise provided in this section the board shall regulate the procedure for its own meetings Great. So that is the meetings of the board. Let's look at committees of the board. The board may, for the discharge of its function, appoint committees of the board comprising members of the board or non-members or both and may assign to them such functions as the board may determine, except that committee composed entirely of non-members may only advise. But yes, we have explained that, yes, the the board is the board has a function to 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 play but then they can make use of committees and the committees that they can form can be technical committee of any other committee that they deem fit to help them discharge their duties and members of the board can join but if a committee is comprised of non-members then their role will be purely advisory so we will break the video into sessions so we'll end here and then we'll look at
the second section of the video and and we'll go through the the, the the remaining provisions like i said we are going session by session just to understand the legal framework regarding the free zone enterprise so see you in the new video in the next video